Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays. Hopping into the BVP 215 Tax 02. We had to look that last part up. Uh, we made a discovery recently that more than half of the firepower for this aircraft for air to ground ordnance is actually in the air to air rockets. That means there's 12,000 damage against ground targets left unused a majority of the time because we are so used to these platforms being air-to-air -air target shooters with their rockets, but that is not how I think these are supposed to be used. So we're going to use this thing to breathe some hate and fire down on the enemy utilizing the air-to-air -air rockets as essentially... Um, oh. Essentially, air to ground ordnance. We'll see how that plays out. Of course, shooting some of these uh, airborne targets as well from time to time here. One, two. Post. Oh, that was close. Uh, we are currently in a dogfight with an F7U, which has better maneuverability than us. But we are going to pull away. There we go. Managed to pick up the zone. Get out of here, Conrad. We don't want none. Okay, so we do have a pretty quick reload on these. Not the best run in on that first target, but we also had a lot of aircraft to contend with. We'll try exercising that same tactic, maybe against a better target. Again, we're a multi-role. We don't really want to be in the thick of the fight, but we'll take our targets of opportunity as we can. Let's see here. Yeah, it's an aircraft I was a little bit worried about. Eugeo Regios. There are a ton of aircraft making their way over to the garrison right now. Confident, however, that we're only going to have to deal with the light fighter. Which is a human-controlled yak. That is Crikey. Crikey's going after the 252. Is he coming after us now? No, he's not going after anybody. Okay, problem solved. Let's actually make our way over to their sector. Good speed on this aircraft. Good hits on that target. Going for the climb. What are you? Oh, not anymore. Oh, it's the F7U from earlier. Attention, all fighters. Stalled out Spitfire. All right, we got knocked out, but that's quite all right. We're about to spawn back in right next to the enemy fighter here. There's a lot of planes over here. Quite a few multi-rolls willing to bet one of them is going to be our own enemy. Um, that's probably going to be Eugene Eugenio Reg Regis. Yes, it is. So I bet they're going to try and defend this site for a little bit. Uh, they're leaving the zone, so maybe we can do something over here. Uh, did one of the air defense aircraft just crash? That's entirely possible.
same guns as the 1092, able to turn the tables on them. Coming back down on the HG2. Good firepower on target. We're not really needing to use these air-to-ground ordnance. Heading for the mid. We actually have pretty decent maneuverability here. We're locking in on the human controlled 94D. Knocked him out. Heading in on the javelin now. Although we do have a 1092 to contend with. He is currently engaging one of our defense aircraft, which means that he's stationary and lined up on a target. I mentioned before that those aircraft straightening out means that they're pretty much unaware of any inbound threats. All right. Javelin's going into a dive onto our heavy. Straightened out target, easy kill. What else do we have over here? Looks like there's a hunter over here engaging our ally. And there's also a BVP-212. I'm gonna put my effort into the hunter because he's going after my ally, or at least he's in a position to possibly engage him. We do have the Crikey over here. We can take out Crikey while he's not paying attention. Lit him on fire, knocked him out, and grabbed the zone, and now we can look for more opportune targets. What's left? Oof. Good battle so far. Pretty happy with our performance. We'll go over the loadout and how we're using this aircraft, and we'll talk more about that air ground ordinance I was referring to, where the real strength was going to lie in the um, in the air-to-air -air rockets. Ooh, almost got him! Almost got him! Barely missed getting wing legend here, but a solid battle, uh, considering that this is the uh, unloved aircraft here. We'll throw up a GG for the team. And we'll head back to the hangar and we'll do a little bit of rough math real quick. So, I kind of made this realization the other day when I was looking at this aircraft's loadout. And it didn't make sense to me that there was a spot for air to ground, or I should say outboard weapon equipment you could put on here. And there was also a consumable, uh, most likely going to be the consumable to increase the damage of the air to ground ordnance. But what I was able to determine was that we we're actually missing, like, this thing. All right, here's the deal. This plane seems too all over the place. I mentioned it when I did the review, that this thing has a little bit of everything, but no major strengths. We've got some rudimentary air-to-ground ordnance with these four rockets. It's not bad, but it's not great. Decent reload. It has the air-to-air -air rockets, so you can do air-to-air -air rocket stuff. It has... Good forward firing armaments, so it has some pretty good heft when it comes to its overall firepower. It has decent airspeed, not the best. Has good hit points, and it also has a tail gunner. So this thing's all over the place with its capabilities. But, when I took a closer look, and I started to do some math. Let's uh, remove the pilot from here, or throw a different pilot in here just for sake of discussion, because I want to take Demo Expert off for a second. When you look at the bomb capacity, the bombs and rockets, you see 19,200 damage, right? So where is that coming from? Because when we go and look at the rockets, the big rockets, 
You're looking at a total of 2,000 damage per rocket, so 4 rockets equals 8,000 damage. There's still a whole bunch of damage left on the table. Where does the other, what is that, like nearly 11,000 more damage come from? The other 11,200 damage comes from these R4Ms. 200 damage per rocket, and you're launching volleys of 8. So 8 times 2 is 1,600. Granted, it's a smaller blast radius, but you're also getting a little bit more of a spread. And it's not a bad blast radius. It's 82 feet. That's pretty decent. It's uh, almost half of what you get with the blast radius for these two 10 rockets. So with that logic, if you were to launch like two volleys of these eight rockets out of this uh, R4M bundle, you're actually going to surpass the amount of damage from one of these rockets. So a combination of these rockets going against ground targets is a totally viable option. And that is a major change. Let's put this pilot back in here with his uh, demo expert because when you compare that to its predecessor in uh, let's say the 212, it's an easy choice when I made this argument that four of these rockets are gonna be better than 24 of the R4Ms. They also only do 150 damage each but the 215 does 200 damage each volley of rockets. So you also carry more than double the number of rockets. So it makes more sense to use them for air to ground work because how many times have people said, the 215, I almost never run into a situation where I'm using the air to air rockets, but they make up more than 50% of your air to ground capacity. So it's going to take some learning, but once you just mentally switch and go, those are meant for air to ground, then I think you're going to discover that this aircraft has a multi-role, a true multi-role, not a multi-role in fighter clothing, because that's what the 212 and the 210 are, essentially a fighter pretending to be a multi-role. You're going to find that the 215 is actually a completely different ball game. You treat this thing like you would an F7U or how you would treat a hunter. It has the ability to do air to air. It has the ability to get some pretty good speed out of it. It has decent hit points because it's a multi-roll and it has air to ground ordinance that reload in a reasonable amount of time with some pretty good burst damage. That's how you should be looking at this airframe and you'll end up having a much better time with it. Now, currently you can see that my configuration for my equipment is I'm going with the lightweight wing frame and I'm also going with the lightweight power unit. Once I specialize this, which I'm, I'm making my way down that track right now, we can go ahead and throw the uprated engine in here, giving this a nice balance for a multi-role aircraft. And then we can also throw on something for the outboard weapons. I was actually thinking about going with the rocket sight because it's all rockets, right? We can really play up to the strengths of the rockets. We can increase the accuracy. We can increase the damage from the rockets to blast radius. And we get a consumable slot to be able to increase it even further. And you can already see we went from 19,200 to 21,120 just by getting Demo Expert active on this pilot. This allows you to be able to focus a little bit because that's what I felt this aircraft was lacking. It lacked focus. It was too all over the place and now i can really hone it in and i'm actually having a lot more fun in this plane so if you happen to have gone down this road and you picked up this aircraft and you feel kind of disappointed with it throw some demo expert skill on your pilot take this thing out and treat the rockets all of the rockets as air to ground ordnance and i think you'll have a little bit more fun with this thing especially with 120 second reload that is a very reasonable reload time for a multi-roll and i think you'll have much more fun with this aircraft fly it like you did the foga wolf fly it like you would a corsair you kind of use it on the periphery you use it to be able to flip capture zones isolate targets that are caught unaware that are probably not where they should be and use your ability to operate in a multitude of different environments higher altitude high speed using the tail gunner to be able to get the advantage on the enemy and let those four 20 millimeter cannons do some serious work. Anyways, that's enough with me kind of blathering on about this airframe. We'll take one more look at the end game statistics right here because I kind of flew past him. 
Uh, we did fairly good considering I'm coming into this cold. This is my first battle of the night. Made some good credits. We're continuing to make progress towards specialization. And we got 480 capture points. Most of that was for killing aircraft. Uh, we only did a minimal amount of air to ground damage. But the potential was there. And if I was planning my approach properly into that first sector. Instead of just throwing rockets all over the place. Uh, I think we would have been able to showcase it a little bit better. But you can help flip zones a lot better. If at the very least, use those air-to-air -air rockets to take out some of, or I should say, the R4Ms, to take out some of the AA sites. And I think you're going to see that you're helping your allies kind of prevent some incoming damage and assisting in flipping and capturing the zone. Your mileage may vary, but give it a shot. It's probably a lot more fun than trying to find an opportunity to get some air-to-air -air rocket kills, because when those present themselves, you'll know. But most of the time, I think we all realize that in the 215, those are few and far between. Again, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.